Hi, my name is Karen Barber and I'm going to share this technique with you that I've kind of called marker layering. And it's just the idea that as you layer deeper colors on top of deeper colors you can get a really nice watercolored picture. Um, what you need to start out with is a, an image of a stamp that's an outline stamp. I've used this stamp from Bordering on Romance and um, a stays on black ink pad which, that I've used. You can use any waterproof black pad um, and then co the colors that you're going to use are going to go from lighter to darker. I started out with Calypso Coral going on to Poppy Parade and then on to Riding Hood Red for the flowers and then for the leaves I just used two colors, Pear Pizzazz uh, and layered on top of that some Lucky Limeade and then I always go around the outside image with uh, Sahara sand or a light gray. So I'm just going to start out. What I want to do is um, color this image here so that you can see that I'm going to color one flower using just the first layer, the next flower using two layers, and the third flower using all three layers. And you can see how it gets progressively uh, more depth and richer looking. Okay, so what I do is I separate each flower into petals like only coloring one petal at a time and I just lay down a little bit of the calypso coral and then take my blender pen and in a circular motion just spread the color to the outside of the flower and again I'm gonna lay down a little bit of color at the base and then in a circular motion just spread it out and you just go to each petal of your flower and do that repeatedly if you like to do this, it's very relaxing. I suppose if you don't, it's probably nerve-wracking because you it is very repetitive, but it's so pretty. And it, I, to me, I, I don't know. I guess I'm stuck in my childhood. I love the coloring part the best. Okay, so all the way out to the outside. And then I go back in with a flower like this and lay down a little bit of more of the color and this time go backwards into your image so that you're taking the line out, you're not spreading the color out so much as you're just kind of erasing the line in between the two colors. Okay, and then the second one I'm going to just have to do that same thing all over again. Circular motion, spread it to the outside. In fact I will color this whole flower using the same technique and then I'll go back and show you the, the other layers and how that changes the whole look of the flower. But it's going to take me a little bit here to get all these layers, all these um, petals Okay, I stopped the video there for a moment so you wouldn't have to be bored and watch me do the whole thing. But see, I have colored all three flowers now using that technique with just the one color marker, Clipso Coral. <clears throat> now I'm going to go with the second um, color, which is Poppy Parade. And I'm going to lay some poppy down at the at the front of each petal and just kind of take that line out and I'm going to be really careful not to go all the way out with it because that's the tendency is to go oh that's pretty and to keep going and then pretty soon you you just have a solid flower again like you did if you colored it with the darkest marker from the beginning so you want to just lay down just a little bit and then take the line out lay it down take the line out and then go back again and put that color at the base and now it doesn't even really need you to take the line out. You'll know when you need to take the line out so when you see a big fat line there. Okay and then I'm going to do that again on this one real quick so I can move on to the last layer. I guess I'll bore you this time with with uh, the same thing on this flower but that's okay you can s kind of see how it's done here. Okay, and now again, right at the base with that color again. 
So now we have one lighter flower and two that are pretty much exactly the same. So I'm going to take now a third color, which is Riding Hood Red, and this is, uh, it's kind of like a lot deeper. So I very am very careful not to lay down too much. Just a little bit at the base and take the line out. A little bit. This is where you can really wreck it if you if you don't just put a little bit. And always remember that you can always add more color, but once you've put too much color on it, you can yeah, just try to get it off. That ain't happening. Okay, and then again, I just really towards the base, go back over and add just a little bit of that. And I'm almost like just kind of outlining the center of the flower at this point. So you can see how that how this flower lacks depth compared to this flower. Okay, now I'm going to do a leaf to show you how I do the leaves. It's really the same way that I do. Oops, that's the wrong one. Starting out with the lighter one, which is the pear pizzazz, and again, um, one layer on top of the other. Get the red off here. Spread your green out. A little more of the pear pizzazz. Whoops, wrong end. A little more of the pear pizzazz at the base. And then go in with the deeper color, which is the Lucky Limeade. There's your leaf. And then when I'm done with that, I um, go around the whole flower. And I'm going to do it around this flower that I've pretty much finished. Of course, I'm not doing all this stuff around the outside in the interest of time. But just basically going around the outside. And it gives it kind of a halo effect, and it's really pretty. And we'll do it on the leaves. I use Sahara sand, but I guess any light gray would work. Again, they're water-based markers. A lot of times, people will write and ask me if I that you know tell me you don't use Stampin' Up markers, do you? you use Copics? And I don't. I have like three Copic markers that I bought once, and I think I need a course, but I don't think I'll ever take one because this is all I ever use. So anyway, that's marker layering with Stampin' Up or with any water-based marker and I hope that you have a lot of fun trying it and I hope that it wasn't too boring. Bye.